Hi, my name is Stephen Rafferty, and you're watching These Are Questions. This is the internet show where I ask people questions about things, life, and such not. And today's guest is a talented artist, an actress, and a playwright. Please welcome Amanda Ortega. Amanda, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Before we get into the show itself, I need to explain the rules of These Are Questions. Amanda. I'm going to ask you a series of questions that are going to be based around your career and aspirations, along with a mixture of questions that are borderline idiotic and, well, randomly stupid. Okay. You accept Sounds those good. terms? Sounds good? Sounds good? Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. So, Amanda, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Internet, are you ready? Okay, ready, all right, cool. Take that as a yes. With that, let's begin. So, Amanda, you're a woman of many different talents, and I want the viewers to get to know more about you. So I would like for you to introduce yourself formally and explain more about what and why you do what you do. So my name is Amanda Ortega, born and raised in Florida. South Florida, to be exact. I went to Florida International University where I received my bachelor's in fine arts for acting in theater. Um, since then, I have done anything from playwriting to doing a one woman show to helping out on films and being an extra. I do this because it's my passion. I love the arts. It's honestly something that gives me so much joy in my life and I mean that's also why I went to school for it so that is why I do it but I also have found different uh, paths in being an artist like creating a podcast for instance and it's to highlight and show fellow artists like what you're doing I think it's so important to be in this field and support fellow artists within this world that we are living in. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I do agree with that. And, you know, as you go through uh, the different forms of whether it be in entertainment or traditional theater or doing live performances or whatever the case may be, it's a very, you know, it's very, a, it's a very big world, but it's also a very small world in between. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows everybody in some shape or form. And um, we knew each other through being on the set of I Before Thee, which is a, a independent film in South Florida um, for Able to Film Entertainment. And we got to know each other doing extra work. And now all these years later, we're getting back together and doing something as a collaborative project. Before I go into my next set of questions, um, can you talk a little bit about your podcast that you do? Definitely. Um, so I haven't done it in quite some time, mm -hmm. but I did approximately 13 episodes. This was right before the pandemic happened. Um, I wanted to do something where I can express my voice and share stories of fellow artists from different realms of the art world, from actual um, physical painters to direct directors, writers. And it was, it's called Why the F Am I an Artist? My podcast was interviewing those artists who have stayed on the path of being an artist. And why are you doing it? Because it's hard. Uh, there's a lot of rejection in this game. And sometimes you just want to give up and say, F it. <laughs> so that's why I called it, why the F am I an artist? It's something that I definitely want to get back into because it was incredible. I think I would have to tone it down because I was doing an interview every week and then you edit everything and then add music and you don't realize the technical aspects it takes to create a podcast but it's very time consuming mm -hmm. so after doing 13 episodes I was kind of drained and I'm like okay I think it's time to take a break now but it was really incredible to get to learn so many different stories and hear the successes and the not so successful stories because that really helps you feel less alone in this game that we're like fighting in. <laughs> 
Yeah, de- definitely. Um, I'm, uh, I'm happy that you were able to do a podcast and really highlight um, a different artists' journeys and their reasoning for staying on their specific uh, paths in the arts. It's, it's not easy, like you said. It's very challenging. It's very difficult. And I like to say it's a crapshoot. Even with everything that you do, you do everything right. Even um, when you're putting all the work and the effort, you're putting the time, you're doing everything correctly, it's no guarantee that you're going to make it to XYZ. It really is a gamble. Um, yes. But that's part of the enjoyment and the fun of it, you know, because you never know where things will take you. Um, with these are questions, it took me three years to do from season one to season two, what we're recording right now. So, like, it's, it's a process. It's not easy to develop an episode, create a series, do the editing, do the post-production, do the technical work. Um, it's, it's not for everybody. Most people can't handle it, for example. And it's the same thing with the arts. Most people can't handle it or understand it unless they're, unless they're deeply in it. There is a specific drive that you must have to continue pursuing this career path because it will knock you down and kick you and kick you and kick you and be like, oh, are you okay? No, I'm gonna kick you again. <laughs> and it's, you just have to be like, I'm gonna get up and get ready to get kicks again. And you know what? Maybe one day <laughs> I'll make it and all those rejections will be so worth it. And I love hearing stories of when people are like, you know what? I'm going to make my own thing. It's so great that you're doing this. Absolutely. Definitely. And thank you, by the way. You know, we, tr- yeah, we but... try. We try. Yeah. yeah. We try. <laughs> and that's, that's the name of the game. It's trying. It's trying. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll get back to podcasts and get it back to more information. I want to move on to my next set of questions. And my next question I want to ask you, Amanda, is I want you to pick a number from one to ten and explain why you picked that number. Eight. Okay. And why? It's my favorite number. I really don't know why. It always has been. Um, I think it's because you can write it in two different in two different ways. Mm-hmm. You could do the kind of S formation or snowman. Yeah, you you could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that works. So I, I like the number eight. Um, I guess I also played pool when I was little and. So the eight ball was always like the one you had to get in last yep. to win. That is, that so. is, that's right. You, <laughs> yeah. you don't want to touch that ball before. So no, no, no. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like your reasoning. Um, I would like for you to remember that number for the end of the season, because it's going to play an important role when all the episodes are out for season two. Um, okay. You may want to put on a sticky note. You, you may want to uh, put it in your acting auditions, you, you, you know, uh, whatever helps you remember it. Um, Please remember it, because it's going to be a very important role for the end of the season. Got it locked in here. I'm a noggin. Good. As we're talking about the arts, and we talk about the difficulty about pursuing the arts, you know, um, I know that you've been you've been directing a lot of, of, of theatrical works when it comes to plays. And, um, you know, how did directing uh, plays start it for you, and what's the favorite part of uh, working in that particular uh, field of feeder. So I think I started back in 2015 with Micro Theater Miami. If you don't know what it is, um, it's it's these shorter form theater plays, and they're performed in shipping containers. Yeah. These metal shipping containers, and it's so cool. The shows usually are 15 minutes long, and the shows have about six per night, so they're in 30 minute increments. You do the show, everyone leaves, then you get to reset, do it all over again. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine was working with them and he told me there was a show that needed a director and he thought I would be perfect for it. I read the script. It had been translated from Spanish to English and I read it and I'm like, this is incredible. And I read it and I also wanted to be in it. I ended up directing the show and directing myself and it was it was a it was difficult it's definitely not easy to direct yourself and also critique yourself um, because you have to do both things not so much critiquing as like self-directing like oh do you think that's really a good choice (laughs) for a certain moment or for the line Mm -hmm. and um 
it made me a stronger actress when I was doing that. And that really kind of ignited this fire of wanting to direct more. After I did that show, it was called Boyers and Women. I got to do it with my friend Janela Santos and Juanita Castro. And um, I also had another friend, Juanita, fill in um, one evening for me because I want to go see Katy Perry. <laughs> oh, there you go. Hey. <laughs> yeah. And as a director, I was like, I'm choosing to go see Katy Perry and not be in my show. Sorry, world. <laughs> but um, that was the first, but it was not the last. And from there, I actually continued working with Micro Theater Miami for about, I would say, a solid two and a half years where I wrote different shows. I directed different um, shows. Um, I directed a friend's play that she had written and got in there. I wrote three other shows that I directed. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a really great journey because I even took one of the shows I wrote there and brought it to a New York festival. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it, was, it was kind of like a dream for me. <laughs> Absolutely, especially for playwriting. Like one of the for okay. many playwrights, the, the dream is showcasing your work in, in New York. You know, with Broadway, for example. You know, like it's it's a it's a huge milestone. It it was one of those moments where I'm like, oh my god, I feel like I've made it. I'm yeah. succeeding in this this career that I want so bad, and um, it was it was really a cool journey to mm -hmm. to get to do that and be in front of an audience that isn't your friends and family, it's complete strangers. And they actually liked my work. <laughs> what is a food that you hated as a child that you love now as an adult? Hmm, cheese. Oh, Ooh, really? Cheese. What? Yeah. What? I know, I was a weird kid. I would pull off all the cheese off pizza and literally just eat the bread with marinara sauce. What? Now, I love cheese. Give me queso by the pound. I mean, just chips and, and queso. Mm, love it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, sometimes when I eat it, I'm like, how did I not like this when I was little? Seriously, especially cheese. Cheese is like a universal like food item. You know what I mean? Like it's like one of the best items I'm, you can have. I know. And it's so sad when people are like, I'm allergic or I can't for dietary restrictions. I'm like, I'm sorry. But I will but, eat the cheese for you. <laughs> that's right. Good. That's good. Good. That's being a good friend. What is the most complicated word that you know? Hmm. Uh. Splendiferous. Ah, I don't know okay. that, that's not that complicated. I don't even know if that's a real word. Um. Think it is? Uh, we'll, we'll Google it. We'll Google it. If it's on Google, then it's a real word. Looking at your extensive portfolio of acting work, um, you've played a lot of different characters. Is there a specific character role that you haven't done yet, but you want to do in the future? Um, I've never actually gotten to play like a nurse or a doctor role. Like I did a very brief. Um, independent film where I got to play a nurse and I had like one line. Mm -hmm. um, but it kind of got me really excited to do something like that in the future. I wouldn't mind trying that um, as a role that I can actually sink my teeth into. Mm -hmm. um, I think that one would be like on the top tier of my list. And then I always would love to like play a villain or something. Something dark. Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. I've played in the realm of that, um, but I've never been like, super like, villainy and super dark. Oh, I would love to sink my 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 actor teeth into it and be like, yeah, let's do this. Let's transform. Yeah, I can, I can see both roles. Um, obviously the nurse, because we the film that we met was a medical type movie um yeah. so we had we had a dress in scrubs and stuff and uh i believe you were dressed as a nurse if i remember correctly or like a medical practice in your i don't remember um, yes i was i i i was a brief moment too yeah little snippets 
little never snippets. Get, never got the full thing. Mm -mm, not yet, not yet, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Um, but maybe you could be a, vi a, a villain nurse. That could be something. Ooh, psycho nurse. Yeah, psycho judges or people. evil nurse <laughs> judges people. Evil nurse. Who would win in a battle? Godzilla or Jerry from Tom and Jerry? Tom and Jerry? Jerry, wait, Jerry. Yeah, Sorry. Jerry, the mouse, the I mouse. I got so excited when you said Tom and Jerry. Let's do Jerry. Against Godzilla? Yeah. Okay. Um, What was it? Uh, David versus Goliath. Yeah. You know? I, I, I put Jerry because, you know, he's very crafty, you know, yeah. right? And, and like, you know, Godzilla has, has a disadvantage. You know, he's really, really big. He could destroy buildings, which could kill Jerry very easily. But, like... His little arms. That is little arms. You know, Jerry could climb mm -hmm. up. He doesn't even feel Godzilla, you know? And, like, he could do something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Tom will probably get killed off anyway, regardless. He'll probably be third wheel in it, but, you know... Yeah. Probably. Probably. Probably, you know? Who knows? That could be an episode, though. Yeah. You know, and you could voice one of the characters. It's possible. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Love being um, like a random weird character. It's a dream. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. One so, day. One day. Being a part of both films and areas of, of theater and, and doing live performances, um, what do you think is the biggest difference an actor must distinguish between performing in front of a live crowd, a live audience, like it's a live performance, and then performing on a studio set, performing on a film set? So everything for, for, for stage is acting out. Everything for film is acting in. And um, I got to take some really incredible um, acting classes with um, a gentleman named Adam Sterner in Atlanta mm -hmm. when I was living there. And my God, it, it like opened me up in a way that I didn't expect. And I didn't know like what you can tap into as an actor because for, for theater, it's, it's you're bigger, but it's in the small moments for film that you can see and hear and like feel a million feelings. Mm -hmm. And it can be so impactful and powerful. And it it's like for, for theater, it'd be like, hi everyone, how are you? And then for, for film, it's like, hi everyone, how are you? It's just like so much subtleness in it. And it takes a lot of work when you've been taught and ingrained a theater way of acting. Does the, do theater actors have an advantage in film? In my opinion, yes. Because something I noticed, and I know this is a little veering off, but what I noticed with film actors who were strictly film and had never done theater before, they have a really difficult time getting off memorizing yeah. lines. It's something that is very challenging for them. And for a theater kid, you're like, oh, I got this. Like, give me a couple hours and I'm down. Uh, I'm fully booked, fully memorized. And there is a flexibility that theater actors have that sometimes film actors don't. And so I always love suggesting that for anyone who's in film, Try doing a couple of theater acting classes, like try taking a Meisner class. That is a spectacular um, form of acting for an actor uh, within film and in theater. But um, because it's it's really making sure that you're listening and letting what the fellow actor is saying hit you. And so your reactions are genuine because the camera will catch a liar. It will see through it. And truth on stage is also truth on camera as well. You just gotta be real. You have to have authentic reactions. And I think when it comes to both um, forms, the, that's where it's interconnected so, so tight. Um, but definitely it's like big to, to, to little, but it doesn't, it's not less acting. It's actually, in my opinion, it's more yeah. <laughs> when it's 
comes to film, yep. it takes so much more energy. Like I remember after taking the acting classes, I would feel exhausted because it took so much in me not to like be bigger, like open my eyes so wide or anything. It was in and it really makes you connect with yourself and fellow actors in very powerful ways. <laughs> Lots of tears. Lots of tears. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Literally, like, yeah, hundred, hundred percent on that. And uh, you know, I come from more of a of a film background, but I, I've done I've done both traditional theater and uh, doing film work. You know, my wheelhouse is more film. But one thing I notice from the other side, when uh, a lot of uh, uh, actors coming from the theater background come into more film. Um, their biggest things, not so much the lines, like you said, like that's that's no problem. They have no issue, but it's understanding the camera and understanding doing multiple takes and being comfortable. And you know, like you said, with theater, you, you you're out. You have to show showcase everything because you have to showcase your emotions and your reactions and your actions and your beat changes to everybody from the first row to the cheap sheets. You know, yeah. um, with the camera, it's extremely subtle, extremely tight knit. And like you're following a group mm -hmm. of individuals that have their vision from a director to a producer to the crew to the camera operators and you're incorporating their vision as opposed to theater where you're not winging it you're following a director and a playwright and their vision but you feel the moment that then and there you react to the audience that then and there and it, it kind of gels as you're going into the show um with the film you don't really have that and that's been one of the hardest things for people that transition from uh, traditional acting the film from what I've seen over the years so um, to go with your advice I think if you're uh, someone that's just does film go into a, a audition to do be a be in a play audition to do you know take classes audition techniques um, take a miser's course take um, you know learn and study the craft of acting yeah. in that regard but if you're someone that's a theater person going into film, study the art and craft into film work and understand why those procedures are in there in those right moments. If you can be versatile in both fields, you're gonna become a better performer overall and you're gonna be able to do more work overall. Speaking of artists and speaking of the arts, um, what's the best piece of advice for up and coming artists? Someone that wants to get into, whether it be in theater, whether it be in film, whether just getting and showcasing themselves as an artist. I think networking is a prime thing. Like you can never not meet enough people in this world because you never know who you're gonna meet. And then boom, all of a sudden they're doing a film project and then that's your foot in the door to start creating a reel. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what a reel is, it's little snippets of an actor's work that they showcase to people to get cast. And it is, so important to just go out there and just mingle and and just chat and even if you don't like doing it push yourself to do it because i wasn't always comfortable meeting people and like and going to these group functions i mean especially now it's going to be more challenging but um it got me meeting individuals that i ended up working with and doing many various projects um meeting jonathan vargas and i did a whole series with him called gabby's revenge the first major project that i got to act in on film and he gave me this incredible opportunity and it was the most acting i've ever done on film and getting to deep deep dive into such a, a character like if i could do it again i would love to because now that I'm a more seasoned actress, especially more seasoned actress for film, oh man, the things I would have done and things I would have changed. But um, so networking definitely. And I would also say for anyone out there who is going out and auditioning and you feel like you're getting a lot of rejections, a lot of no's, um, get a group together, create your own yes. I always like to say that, write something, put pen to paper. If you don't think you're a writer, you're thinking you're not a writer, but have you tried? I think that we stop ourselves from pursuing things that we can really be great at because our mind says something different. But I think if you just do something, if you have a great idea, 
write it down, get a group together, film it, put it out into a festival. I think all things are possible, especially with how COVID has very much impacted the arts community. I think that it's really a time and an initiative for people to go out and do powerful work um, that you can get out there and people are watching. People want to support. I'm off Great. my soapbox now. <laughs> <laughs> I get so passionate about all of this, especially for anyone who's starting out and going into the business because it's not, it's not easy. Um, don't give up. Try. Don't give up. Um, they always say that you have failed when you stop trying. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, you won't know until you try and see if it works or not. Exactly. I have one final question to ask you, Amanda. And um, it's, it's more of a scenario. Um, it, you know, the scenario is you are looking for lost treasure in an undisclosed location somewhere on planet Earth. Um, you can't do it by yourself. So you need to hire a crew. You need to hire a crew of adventurers. Who would be in your crew and why? Uh, my friend Kayla, because she's incredibly smart and she's she could figure things out very well. My friend Juanita as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say uh, those two would be solid. Um, include my boyfriend <laughs> uh, so I can have someone to love. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, my mom is really good at, at that and so is my dad. I think they'd be solid people to get a, up in that group. Uh, how many people do I have? Do as, I, ma as many as you want, as many as you need to find this long lost hidden treasure. Um, I'll cap it at that, so it okay. doesn't get too crazy. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I don't want to make it too big either because you got to yeah. split the treasure, you know? Oh, yeah, man. Oh, oh, my mom loves, like, treasure and all things lotto tickets and, <laughs> and playing games to win fake money. So she should well, be all about the real real treasure. That's right. Well, I can tell you, it's not, it's not a fake treasure. It's not going to be one of those scavenger hunts. It's actual real treasure. <laughs> um, so... Don't have to worry about that. Gold. That's right. You know, pirate hunters. Arg, she made it. Gotta get that gold. Arg. Arg. If you look at my invisible watch that I don't have on this weird looking hand, um, this is the time of the interview. We're done. We're finished. This is it. This is whatever. We're done with these questions. Um, this is your moment. Anything that you want to say, any last words, anything you want to promote, this is your moment to shine. So the floor is yours. Hello. Amanda, one last time. Um, so currently I'm not acting right now. I'm taking a bit of a hiatus. Um, I think that's something very healthy and important for um, any actor to um, remember. Mental health comes first, your physical, everything comes first. You are your own business. So if you're not at the top of your game, people might not want to hire you. So take a, take a minute to step back. It's, I'm not stopping. I'm just reflecting and taking time for myself and then I'll get back into it. This industry is challenging and with COVID it's made it even more challenging. Um, so that's why I personally am taking a break because I just need, I, I got to do some, some theater <laughs> during like kind of like in the middle to, to high portion of when COVID was like really hitting um, America. And I didn't fully feel safe. And for a while it like really affected me. And it hasn't gone away. I'm not saying that at all. Um, I'm not belittling this, the, the, this craziness that has happened in our world. Um, but I think it's important if you don't feel safe, if you don't feel comfortable to do a performance, don't do it. There'll be more, there'll be plenty more to come. So um, that is my bit of advice to everyone. Take care of yourself, 
love one another. Um, if you want to create your own work during this period of time and that feels safer for you, do it. I'm very excited. I'm actually writing some work right now. Um, and so I'm excited for that. Um, and hopefully I'll be creating either a short film from it or a next theater piece that we will see. Okay. All right. Yeah. Some exciting work is currently being worked on getting it to fire brewing. brewing in the brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to see your next upcoming projects um, when they do come out and release. Um, all of uh, Amanda's information will be in the descriptions down below, be in all the media places. So you'll be able to follow all of her works as she's going on to her creative artist journey. And um, yeah, you can see my stuff and uh, all my stuff's in the description. I don't want to plug anymore. All I want to say now is that you have been watching These Are Questions. Yeah. Have a good morning, everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, whether you're watching at 6 o'clock in the morning or 7.30 in the afternoon, uh, we appreciate you. We do. We do. Very much so. <laughs>